Hello everyone and welcome back to Hidden Chasms. This is the final part, part 7. I'm excited for it. I hope you will like it. I know the series overall wasn't as popular. I'm still sad that it's ending. So tell me in the comments which was your favorite part of all of them. His name was Yoshida. Sakusa looked up surprised. They had snuggled up in bed together after eating and waiting for Atsumu to calm down, but evidently neither of them found sleep. He sat up and turned on the lamp on his nightstand. When his gaze fell on Atsumu, he gulped. The setter's eyes were unfocused as though they were looking at something in the far, far distance. Sakusa was unable to see. He had theories about who this Yoshida guy was, theories that became more elaborate and uglier with every crumb of information he was given. You mean, the guy you saw at the store today? His tone was careful. He saw what it did to Atsumu. The simple image of this guy seemed to invoke memories that paralyzed him. Slowly, Sakusa reached out to take his hand. Atsumu flinched briefly as his fingers ghosted over his skin, but intertwined his fingers regardless and nodded slowly. He... He was my boyfriend. Before you. He saw how much it cost the setter to say the words, and squeezed his hand reassuringly. Sakusa felt dread pulling in his stomach. It wasn't like he hadn't considered that before, but part of him had hoped their past had been that of a toxic friendship, or just an unlucky encounter. This made more sense, but he wished it wouldn't. He wasn't... good... to you. It was more of a statement than a question, but Atsuma answered regardless and shook his head. He was nice at the beginning, very charming, and he, he said he cared so much that I was the most important thing in the world. Every word felt like acid dripping onto his skin. Atsumu was one of the most important things in the world, in his world. He should have cared about him. But Sakusa recognized this as what it was love bombing, a tactic used by abusers to rope in their victims, a honey trap. But then, it started with little things, like criticizing what I did, and then how I looked. He would get loud and demanding, and then apologize. But the apologies in good days became less frequent, and he made me feel like I was at fault for his behavior, that I had, that he had to punish me. His voice broke, and Sakusa couldn't bear it anymore. He gently tugged at Atsumu's hand to ask if it was okay, but instead of an answer, the setter pulled the blanket aside and snuggled up to him. Immediately, Sakusa pulled him into the embrace and soothingly wrapped over his arm. He said, after I caught him cheating the first time and refused to sleep with him, he said he had to cheat because of that. And His voice broke again and he took a shaky breath before continuing. Asuma got me up. I was too deep to say anything. He made me think it was normal, but Samu saw the bruises and saw red. Sakusa could imagine it. Even without spelling it out for him, he knew what this meant. Yoshida had crossed the line to physical violence. He felt the same anger he was sure had driven the younger Mia, spreading just under his skin. He 
he held Atsuma tighter. I stayed with Samu, and soon out and after that. They helped me get a restraining order, but there wasn't much more we could do. He felt Atsuma struggling to keep his breathing even, and the dampness as he hit his face against his chest and cried. I'm so sorry, Atsuma, that he did that to you. You didn't deserve that. All he got in response was a sob, and it clawed at his heart. Atsumu was his sunshine, his daylight and beacon. How could anyone ever wish to diminish his light? He was gorgeous when he shone the brightest. It was painful seeing him hurt. I will never hurt you like that. I know these memories won't vanish from one day to another, but I'll be here. You just tell me what you need. He nodded weakly against his chest. Um, do you love me? He sounded so broken that it shattered something within Sakusa as he felt the first tear slip over his cheek. Yes. Atsumu, I love you more than words can tell. The last three months, almost four, of finally showing it openly have been the best of my life. I didn't think I was capable of a love like this, let alone a relationship like this, even if I wanted it. But you proved me wrong, and I'll love and worship you to the end of time if you wish so. Atsumu only cried harder, but before Sakusa had the chance to panic, the blonde hugged him tighter soothing himself with deliberate, slow, yet shaky breaths. I love you too. You're more than I deserve. Sakusa shook his head, now on the edge of breaking as well. How could Atsumu think such a thing? No, Atsumu. If at all, I don't deserve you. I've been cold to you and in denial, but you... You are kind, passionate, loving. You care so much, and I'm grateful you care about me. You deserve everything the world has to offer, and I'll give you everything that's in my power to give if you ask. I should have told you from the start that... About everything. That I wasn't... That I was broken. It wasn't fair to you. You... You looked so hurt the other day when I stormed out. I... The words of defiance, the rejection of Atsuma's statement already assembled on his tongue, only held back by his tightly sealed lips as he let him finish and thought about it. He didn't blame him, but Sakusa needed to choose his words carefully. Be honest. I was hurt. I was hurt because I could see that you were. I was terrified because I saw the horror in her eyes, and I was mortified at the thought that I invoked it. You didn't. I did. Unknowingly. But I did. And maybe that alleviates my guilt in that matter, but... I don't care who or even if there is someone to blame. I hurt you, knowingly or not, and I never wanted to do that. He took a deep breath. I can't undo it, but I need to acknowledge it so that it won't happen again. And I need you to acknowledge it as well. Even if you see no reason to blame me, I need you to hold me accountable should I ever make a mistake like that again. Can you do that for me? Tell me when my words or actions hurt you, even if it's accidental. Atsumu gulped, visibly overwhelmed by his request, but nodded. He looked up at him through tear-clouded ember, a golden ocean full of devotion and pain. 
It was the first time Sakusa saw his heart reflected so raw on his face, unguarded and open. As to whether you should have told me, no, it's not that you should have. Would have been good to know, but I get it. It took me a very long time to open up about virtually anything in this. This is so much more personal than what my favorite color is or what TA like best. Atsumu chuckled a little. You yeah, were real secretive on Miami. <laughs> yeah, but you figured me out regardless. So did you. Sakusa looked at him questioningly. When I returned from Samus, I was scared. I thought maybe we hadn't been together long enough for such a burden. Maybe we were still in the experimental phase and you'd decide it wasn't worth it. Tsuma. He wanted to say something to reassure him, but Atsumu wasn't wrong after all. Four months was in the world. It was the blink of an eye in the overall scheme of things. That he felt already so tethered to the setter wasn't something he had expected himself. But then, yeah, grab my favorite mug and my favorite tea. Yet it's new. You're such a strict person when it comes to your routines, but somehow you're just... It just included me like it was nothing, like it was easy, and I knew we'd be alright. Surprised, the ace met his gaze again, now filled with warmth. He felt the same, more so perhaps. He was equally confused by how seamlessly their lives had intertwined, and even more that it didn't bother him at all. It was easy. Nothing in my life has ever been, but loving you, Mia Atsumu, was the easiest thing I ever did. Atsumu's eyes glossed over again, and so did Sakusa's. He sniffled while wiping at his face. You sure were in a lot of denial for that? Sakusa chuckled softly, sitting up and pulling Atsumu along with him. Perhaps it was too easy. It scared me. I never felt like this before. He leaned forward, an invitation that Atsumu swiftly accepted as he sealed their lips together. It was bittersweet, between tears of pain and tears of relief. When they separated, Atsumu looked down again. His fingers that had buried themselves into Sakusa's shirt started to tremble. Thank you. I... Yashiro... He made it seem like loving me was a chore. Like he was unlovable and he was doing me a favor. I... He... You're not. It is not a chore. You are so loved. Not just by me, or Samu, or Suna, or your ma. The team loves you. Your fans love you even though they can be obnoxious. They might not know you as well as I do or as Samu does, but we do and we are still here. I won't leave and I don't love you any less now than I did before. Atsumu's bottom lip trembled, and he looked like he wanted to thank him again. So Sakusa silenced him with another bittersweet kiss, and just held him as the seconds ticked by. Thank you. He acknowledged it with a hum, half wanting to intervene again that he shouldn't thank him for something that came naturally to him. 
Loving Atsuma was easy, and he hated that someone made him feel as though this love was conditional in all the wrong ways. But he kept silent for now. It had been enough for today. They were exhausted. I watched a show you liked so much again when Mutio was here. And then again the next day. Huh? Why? He was too perplexed to even be offended that he wasn't there. I missed you, and it reminded me of you. I get it now, by the way. That confession scene was pretty heart-wrenching. I even cried once. Huh? Ami? How dare you finally understand when I'm not there? There it was. Atsuma pouted and looked at him accusingly, and Sakusai couldn't help but laugh as his lips stretched into a soft smile afterwards. He missed this. I'm sorry, my love. We can watch it again if you like. Pink dusted the set of cheeks as he was regarded softly with a warm gaze and a gentle touch against his face, where Sakusa wiped away the tear tracks that had been left on his skin. No, it won't be the same. Besides, what am I going to do with all your rude comments? They're not rude. I'm trying to understand. They are and you know it. But I like it. Grumpy is kind of part of your personality. You're just like that. Sarkasa rolled his eyes and Atsuma grinned. And here I was trying to be more romantic. Isn't that what you always wanted from me? I'm just teasing you, Ami. He whined when suddenly his expression softened again. I know that I require a lot of attention and reassurance and that that must get annoying sometimes. It's not. He stopped himself as Atsuma continued. But I love you, Kiyomi. The way you are, not some idea of you. I don't want you to change. Some more romantic gestures would be nice, but don't pretend you're someone you're not. Alright, I hear you. Don't worry, beloved. He could feel his own face heat up. Not just at the nickname, but also because, without his consent, his mind was playing Atsumu saying his full name on repeat in his head. He got stuck on it, like a broken record. It sounded forbiddenly good coming from him. Loving and affectionate. By the way, have you noticed something odd between your cousin and Suna? Yeah, they've been texting a lot more than usual. Almost grateful for the distraction, Sakusa immediately accepted the change of topic. When Motia told me you were at your brother's place, he didn't want to tell me how he knew that and blushed. You don't think Suna is cheating on Asumu, do you? If he does, he's doing an awful job at hiding it, considering he's been showing him the text messages. At least, I'm assuming those were the ones between Kamari and him. They acted all weird about it, and didn't want to show me either. Odd. I left them thinking, but even after speculating for the next couple of hours until exhaustion finally took a hold of them completely, they didn't come to a logical conclusion, which was frustrating to say the least. Half asleep, Atsumu made plans to kidnap his brother and interrogate him, to which Sakusa added he had duct tape stored next to the cleaning supplies. And so the plan took shape, 
Apparently, they would kidnap Atsumu's brother and interrogate him or extort Suna and Komori for information as ransom. They fell asleep in each other's arms. The tension fell off them in the early hours of dawn, and they slept through the entire morning as their love was illuminated by the light of a new day. Thank you so, so much for watching till the end. Uh, please like and subscribe if you like this series. And yeah, it's the end of the series. I honestly can't believe it. I might do a bonus part in the future with like a super cut and everything as I usually do, but I'm not sure yet. Um, I know this series wasn't as popular, so I'm particularly thankful for everyone who watched it from the beginning to end. Thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you for watching it. It is really, really a lot appreciated. And I especially appreciate my nerdy Nekos. A special thanks goes out this time to Sav and Alexis. I hope I pronounced your names correctly. Thank you for joining. And yeah, if you are not an Eddie Neko, you watching right now, check out the join button under this video. Also, everyone, tell me your favorite quote and or moment under the pinned comment. And here's more content. Check it out if you like. Bye. Have a wonderful and amazing day. Grow hard about what you want to be. Step four. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day Wake up, Wake up. today's gonna be